Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on a day that is, well, the frightful weather has returned after it being absolutely freezing yesterday. We now have a storm today with 60 mile an hour winds uh, upon us and apparently going to continue into the evening. I'm going to distract myself from all of this though by trying a puzzle and this will be a debut on the channel um, for the constructor Juggler. Uh, and I think the real name of Juggler is Michael Lefkowitz. Um, and this puzzle has been recommended to us so fulsomely by none other than Marty Sears that we thought we had to have a go at it. Uh, Marty thinks it's criminal that this puzzle has only had a handful of solves since it came out. Um, and I have to say, I have had a quick read of the rules before I turned on the webcam. And the rules are, well, this is a miraculous puzzle. Uh, so ba the basic idea is this entire 7x7 grid is covered with Sudoku thermometers and we have to find where the thermometers live. And But the thermometers can go diagonally as well as orthogonally from cell to cell. And my, my first reaction to that is that that breaks all of the sort of tricks that I thought I might be able to employ to solve such a puzzle. Um, so anyway, this is what we're going to have a good look at. Heatstroke by Michael Lefkowitz. Um, and I will read you the rules properly of this one in moments or two's time. Some things to mention first. Shout out to Apayo, the brilliant constructor, who um, watched our video, or I think it was my video on Friday, where I covered a puzzle that had a magic square in it. And I ran through some of the tricks I know about magic squares. Anyway, Apayo sent me this, which is absolutely incredible. <laughs> um, there is a, a Twitter uh, handle, which is about Scrabblegrams. And I didn't know this was a thing, but basically um, this, this person who created this, I should actually, I, I will link the Twitter handle under the video. But they, they've written uh, about the features of magic squares. It is a magic square where numbers grouped by horizontal, vertical or diagonal like 6, 7 and 2 add up to 15. Enjoy. Now, the thing is, you can read that and not appreciate something about it. But if I was to tell you that this, this wording here is made up of the exact 100 tiles that you get in a game of Scrabble, you might find it more impressive. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So apparently, obviously in a game of Scrabble, you have two blanks. So one of the R's in this sequence is a blank and one of the S's is a blank. And other than that, the 98 other given letters that you get in a Scrabble set are used precisely once each. Uh, that is a real, really amazing achievement, I think. Fantastic. Um, and I love the fact that up here we've got We've got effectively what, what has become a bit of a Sudoku secret. So Apayo, thank you very much for sending that over to us. Um, now, what else can I tell you about? Um, oh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Catalina over there in Chile, who has been drawing watercolours of me. I, actually, I meant to get a pic that picture up, but I, I've forgotten uh, <laughs> while watching Cracking the Cryptic videos. Um, now, shout out to Simon as well, whose birthday it was the other day. And I was very jealous. Um, that uh, Simon's wife, Kate, I think was creating chocolate Guinness cake uh, for him. Now I have a, an actual picture of said cake. Look at this. Doesn't that look unbelievable? And Simon was kind enough to send me the recipe that can be used to create this, which is a Delia Smith recipe. Um, but apparently in order to create something that looks like this, and let's, let's be honest, that is the cake you want. So, you know, you can use the Delia recipe as a basis, but this is the actual cake we need to make. Um, in order to convert Delia's recipe into this, what you have to do is leave out the walnuts and double the amount of icing. <laughs> and then you can create that, which is something I'm quite keen to do. Um, other than that, what else do I need to tell you about? Uh, we've, we've passed the closing date, haven't we, for our monthly competition over on Patreon. Yesterday on the channel, we released Totally Normal Cats, Broken Secrets, my solve of that amazing puzzle by the the strangely named totally normal cat a creature that is anything but totally normal um so if you do like the really long videos of really hard puzzles that might be something you like to have a look at um now oh and we need to stream more hex cells we will definitely be doing that this week i will soon tell you when unfortunately i don't know at the moment um and then i've got three birthdays to 
uh, to let you know about. I'm going to start off by wishing Ethan a very happy ninth birthday. Uh, Ethan is down there in Laporte. Is that how you say it or is it Laporta uh, in Texas? And Ethan, I know it's your birthday today because your dad, George, wrote to us. And George told, told me that you are not only into maths now, but you're also into geography and chemistry. And you've even memorized um, the periodic of table of elements song. Now, I think by that your dad means, is that the Tom Lehrer song? I hope it is. Um, when I was younger, I also learned that and viewed it as probably the finest musical work that there ever was. Um, and I won't be able to do it now, but I, re I remember some of the end of it. Is, there's yttrium, terbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolidium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, barium. <laughs> These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. There may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. Da, 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 da. Tom Lehrer, of course, an absolutely brilliant satirist and creative genius. Um, <laughs> which reminds me of one of his live albums. Uh, anyway, Ethan, I'm delighted to hear that you're learning, you're, you're learning things like that. Sorry for butchering it and sorry to the YouTube algorithm. Do not give me a copyright strike. That was nothing like the original at all. Um, next, Joss, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your boyfriend Bob wrote to us and said that you've been watching since the miracle. Well, that's, that's quite a long time ago now. So thank you very much for staying with us all that time. And Joss, I wish you many happy returns and one of those chocolate Guinness cakes. Um, and then finally, over there in Brazil, it is Carol's birthday today. Carol has turned 21. And I know this because your boyfriend, Rayan, wrote to us. I hope I'm saying that right. Rayan. I don't know that, I don't know that name. Um, and you often watch Cracking the Cryptic videos over dinner together. Well, that is very civilized. Um, I will also tell you, uh, Carol, that Rayan wrote that you are the most endearing and delightful person. You have made his life very, very happy for the past year and for hopefully lots and lots more. So isn't that lovely? Carol, many happy returns. I hope it's a good one. I'm sure it will be. Now, let us turn our attention to heat stroke and see what Michael Lefkowitz has in store for us. These are the rules. Fill the grid with the numbers one to seven, such that no number repeats in a row or column. Okay, so it's not quite normal Sudoku, I'm realizing now, because we haven't got any regions. Um, so, okay, we just have to not repeat digits in rows and columns today. The grid is completely covered by thermometers. You cannot see them because they are invisible. That's what the instructions say. You cannot see them because they are invisible. <laughs> Nevertheless, numbers increase along thermometers starting from the bulb. So let's actually try and draw in a thermometer, shall we? Let's get the pen tool. So if we drew make that a circle um, and let's draw a thermometer. There we go. So if this square here was a two, then as we move along the thermometer, just as mercury would rise as the temperature rises, so must our Sudoku digits rise as we move away from the bulb. So this would have to be at least a three, but it doesn't have to be a three. It could be more than three. It could be five. And then that could be eight and that could be nine. And that would be a legitimate way of making a Sudoku thermometer work. Um, now, what next? Thermometer lines move orthogonally and diagonally and do not cr cross except at the white diamonds where they must cross either themselves or another thermometer line. So what does that mean? That is a good question. So we've got some diamonds in the grid. So these are going to be sort of intersections of thermometer lines. But the terrifying thing here is that reading that instruction suggests that the thermometer could sort of loop back round and cut itself. So you don't even know where these diamonds are occurring in the grid, that it's two different thermometers uh, intersecting. You just know that there is an intersection. <laughs> um, I suppose we know that there's no there's a sort of negative constraint, isn't there? Because th there can't be a crossing of thermos here, for example, because there isn't a white diamond. Uh, then it says lines do not pass through black X's. So we've got some of those in the grid. So we can't have a thermometer going from there to there, for example, because of this X in the corner is how I interpret that. Thermometer. Ah, this is an interesting rule. Thermometer bulbs do not touch 
even diagonally. So there's a sort of star battle type constraint. So if this was the bulb of a thermo, then you couldn't have a bulb of a thermo in any of those squares. Because if you were to put uh, another bulb in any of these squares, they obviously would touch either orthogonally or diagonally, and that would be against the rules of the puzzle. And then finally, it says all thermometers are, of, are the same length. And that is it. Do have a go. Apparent, I mean, isn't just just pause for a moment. Isn't it astonishing that this puzzle has a unique solution? Just looking at it with those rules, I find it astonishing. Um, Marty Sears says it's astonishing, and if Marty says it's astonishing, he's almost certainly right. Do have a go. The way to play is click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, right now, now. I'll tell you what, what, what did occur to me as I read the rules. It says all thermometers are the same length. Now, a seven by seven grid has 49 cells. And 49 is interesting if we try and factorize it because it, its factors are only seven, basically, seven squared. So there are either 49 one cell thermometers in this puzzle, which seems unlikely. Or there are seven thermometers, uh, each of length seven. And that is, I think, what we're going to have to have here. Although, no, yes, OK, I was just thinking to myself, how do we know that there are not 49 thermometers of length one? And that gave me pause for thought for a moment. And there may be very obvious reasons why this isn't the case. But I think probably it's a simple reason would be that we know that the thermometers cross at the diamonds. So the length, the minimum length of a thermometer in the puzzle is now two, because these thermometers must be of length two. And therefore, 49 thermometers of length one is ruled out. I apologize if there's a much simpler way. I think there probably is of immediately deducing that, but but I, I think I've found a valid way. Um, now, okay, so, so we know every thermometer is of length. Okay, so if we know every thermometer is of length seven, every thermometer must start, there must be a thermometer start in every row and every column of the puzzle, because we know that every thermometer in the puzzle starts with a one. And there must be a start or an end. And there must be an end of a thermometer in every row and column, because the, every thermometer will end in a seven. And obviously, there's only one seven in every row and column. And that logic extends for all the digits. It's just ones and sevens feel like they're going to matter more to me. So. So, hmm. I'm just wondering whether I whether, whether there's something I can do here straight away that's going to no. I mean, I, I was just playing in my mind. I'm, I am going to start and think about this in a minute because that that feels like it must be the starting cell or the most obvious starting cell. But I was just wondering, because of the star battle constraint, which says that we can't have thermometer bulbs touching one another, whether in a seven by seven grid where I have to have seven, I don't think there is anything, is there? I was wondering whether you you could only put a certain number into the middle of the grid or something like that. Um, I mean, if that was one, that would that would take a lot of the real estate. No, the problem is you could actually have you could have a silly arrangement. Well, you couldn't. No, you couldn't have that for the bulbs because you'd repeat the one all over the place. I don't know, actually. I have a feeling there might be something sort of ultra meta that we could do here. That would somehow help us. But anyway, I'm going to I'm going to move on to the lower hanging fruit because my brain isn't telling me exactly how to do that. So 
Okay, so we know that this cell seems to be fenced off. We know this is part of a seven cell thermometer. And in fact, it's the end, well, it's the start or the end of a seven cell thermometer because this cell has to be of length. Well, this, this, this cell has to be part of a seven cell thermometer and it can't exit this way, this way or this way. So it's got to go this way. So we're going to have to build some thermometers, aren't we? What color should we use to build them? Maybe red? Is that a sensible choice? I'm not sure. I'd be, I'm prepared to change this if, if it feels wrong. Now that can't go like that because of the X in the corner. So it goes like that. So this square here though, we don't know whether it's one of the important bulbs. If it's a bulb, then we can't put another bulb in any of these squares. But if it's a seven, which is its other option, it's one or seven, I suppose, um, then then there's no restriction. But whatever it is, there can't be another one of it. I mean, that's self-evidently obvious in the column, but I, um, I mean, I don't know whether I'm meant to do this and sort of pencil mark the, the sequential digits. If this is a seven, obviously that's six, that's five. If that's one, that's two, that's three. Oh, I know what we should do. I know what we should do. We should draw in um, crossings, shouldn't we, in, in, the, in the diamonds. Let's draw in crossings in the diamonds because that's probably going to be sensible. And there's something going on down here. Well, yeah, okay. So this cell has to be on a thermo because the, therm the grid is fully tiled. How do you get into that cell, given that that cell's on a seven cell thermo? It must be that, mustn't it? And the same, oh, yeah, the same is true of this. That, that, that actually can only get out that way. Yeah, that, that's right, isn't it? So once you get this one in, the one from this cell, you, we then can't do that because that would require a diamond. And there isn't a diamond in this, in this, at this junction. So we have to go up there. And therefore, what about that square? That, that square has got to be on a thermo. Ah, got it. Right. Right. OK. So what we do now is we look at these two squares, which are the ends of thermos. Now, I don't know whether which one of these is a start or an end, but I know that they are a start and an end between them. So in these two squares is a one, which is a bulb of a thermo. Therefore, we can use star battle logic to tell us that neither of these can be the start or end of a thermo. Because if this was a bulb, it wouldn't matter uh, which is a one, I suppose. If this is a one, it's touching that one, isn't it? So this, this is not a bulb and therefore and therefore a thermometer, and it's not a, uh, oh no, hang on, hang on, hang on, I might be wrong now. It's definitely not a bulb, but could it be a seven? If it's a seven, and then that's a seven, and this is a one, and this is a two, Oh, so, no, I'm, I'm totally wrong. Oh, I, I'm totally wrong. I'm totally right. It could be a seven. But for, for, I thought I was going to be able to prove that this, this had to have a thermometer, um, a thermometer going in and out of its cell. So it, it, so it would be part, part way. It, it would be, it wouldn't be an end of a thermometer, either the start or the end. But I'm now not sure I can do that. Um, okay, no, <laughs> all right, I'm going to try something else. Let's try these. Um, this is, this is two or six. Oh, hmm. What about that one then? Do we know what this one does? Yeah, actually this, this one is better. Because it doesn't ma it doesn't actually matter which of these is the one. It definitely sees this cell. So this can't be a one and it can't be a seven. So this cell 
has an in and an out from it along a thermo. And right, I can see how that works. So how do we get in and out of this square? Because it can't be the end of a thermo. Well, we have, I think we've got to go up and diagonally. So now we've got a one, we've got a four length thermo here. So this, this thermo can't join to this thermo because if we did try and join them up, we'd have a length eight thermo, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we know that that's not, 49 is not, doesn't divide by eight into integers. Uh, there's a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. So, okay. So what does that mean? Oh, that's a good question. Let me think. Um, if that's the end of a thermo, it, it, it couldn't join there, so it would have to join to this one or this one. So if this was a 1 or a 7, there would be a 2 or a 6 in one of these squares, which would move on to 3 or 5. Uh, there's a tiny point about that square. That square is clearly in the middle of a thermo. So it can't be 1 or 7, and by Sudoku it can't be 2 or 6. So that's 3, 4 or 5. <laughs> now Mark would immediately move to these squares and write in a lot of different options. Um, ah, alright, well I'm not going to do that. But... I think it's fair to think about this digit, isn't it? This is really cool, actually. This square is where I'm going to look now. Because I think this square has to be 3, 4 and 5 as well. I might be wrong about this, but I don't I think it's right. Because if this wasn't 3, 4 or 5, it, we can see it can't be 1, 7. So it would have to be a 2 or a 6. But that means this square because we know this is not a 1 or a 7, the way the thermo would develop is it would go, it would either go 5, 6, 7, or 3, 2, 1, and this would need to be a 1 or a 7, which it can't be. So that square is also 3, 4, or 5. And now, uh, well now, that square... <laughs> well, one, one of these must be a 4 now because this needs to be a sequential. So if that's four, that's three, five, that's three, five. Ah. One, two. One, two, three. Oh, no, that, that works. Oh, bobbins. I thought I might have been able to conclude these two don't join up together, but I can't. So this square is two, six, or three, four, five. And if it's three, four, if it's three, four, or five, then that square is two or six. Hmm. Um, ah, got it. Right, that square is not 4. Because if that square is 4, these two squares have to be the digits either side of 4. It's like weird. You can almost see the Kropke white dot relationships between these, these cells. So if that's 4, this is a 3-5 pair, and that cell's broken, even though it's not even on the thermo. So that's not 4. That is 3 or 5. So that cannot be three or five and has been proved to be four. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So now this is three or five by a process of the fact that four must be flanked by three, five. This is a two, six, because that must be the next digit after a four, a three or a five, and then it must go two or a six. So the next digit is one or seven. And where does it go? It doesn't go there. 
because there's a 1, 7 in the column. So that is 1 or 7 and belongs to this one. Oh, I like this. Now this square has to get onto a thermo and it can't be a 1 or a 7. So this is a thermo goes in and out of this square. So that's got to do that. And now we can fill in some more. We get another 4 in the grid because, again, the 3, 5 must have a 4 on one side of it. And that's got to be here because that one isn't a 4. So this is a 3 or a 5. Now, in this column, that's a 3 or a 5 by Sudoku. Oh, bother. OK. So now this one could go in two different directions. Pro uh, probably, actually. Let me just think about that. One, two, three, four, five. No, that's fine, isn't it? This one. This one is going to a 2, 6 next, which must be in one of the... Oh, no, not there, because of this X on the corner. So this one goes into one of those for a 2, 6. And it's the opposite type of 2, 6 to this. So it's the same 2, 6 as that. OK, so we need to colour this, I think. I think we need to colour this to keep track of our, our, our various pairs of digits. Um, where should we start from? I don't know if it's going to matter. I think it's either going to be these two or these two. I th yeah, I think we're going to get the same effect either way. So I'm going to start down here. So we'll make this square, we'll make that square red, shall we? And that square, hmm, blue. So now, we know that red, so which could be 1 or 7, but we know the next digit next to red, we'll call that dark green. We'll make this light green. Now, then we'll say the next digit after, um, after dark green will be, um, I don't know, let's make that orange. And then we'll make this maybe purple because we can see that if if this is orange this is definitely not orange and therefore this is orange by sudoku which means that is purple by sudoku okay and now look it gets very interesting no jokes about me and parties thank you very much um oh hang on that's orange um that's purple therefore but But if you imagine this line extended further, the red, dark green, orange line, it would go into a 4 next, wouldn't it? And then it would go into the purple 3, 5. And then it would go into the light green 2, 6. So this run of digits here, that 2, 6 is the same as that 2, 6. Hopefully, because because the the two six that's next to the orange three five on the line is always the dark green two six, which means that is red, which means that is blue, which means that is light green. Uh, I think four we don't need a color for because obviously four has no option. It just we just write it in wherever it occurs. Ah, now hang on, hang on, hang on. So how, oh, right. So what digit is it that comes after? Yeah, so dark green is now in one of these two, is what we've learned. Because we said dark green couldn't be here because, because of this X on the corner of row one, column two. So one of these is a two, six. And then there's going to be, oh, then there's going to be a red one, seven, which which obviously can't clash with this, which is on a different thermo to this one. Ah, this is annoying. This, this, this light green 2.6, I think it wants to go next into a purple, and it's got two purples to choose from. It could go there, or it could go here.
Okay, but this this purple, we know that purple and orange on one side of them always have four, don't they? So there is definitely a four that attaches to this purple, and that must be in one of those squares. And I think that means so whichever one of these is four, and is att therefore attaching to this purple, it has an orange on the other side of the line. So one of these is orange, attaching to a four, attaching to this. Um, is that a problem? <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, hang on, that's nonsense. What I was about to say then was such unbelievably utter nonsense, I cannot tell you. Dear, 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 Simon. Um, so what's the other... The other digit then? No, there's a problem here. There's a problem here, I think. Ah, oh, I'm confusing myself. Um, if, if... If this goes up into row 5, column 3, like that, then you can see this square here has to join... It had, it's it's the middle of a thermo, so it must it must we must have that arrangement going on, mustn't we? But doesn't that require one of these digits? Ah, no, I'm wrong. One of these digits would be light green. Then one of these digits would be light green, and that one could be light green. So actually, that would probably, that may well work then. Apologies, I, was, I thought I could see that that wasn't going to work. But I actually think that might work. So how else could we do this then? That's the next question, isn't it? Um, we could argue about... I don't know. I don't know where to look. Come on, Simon. What could we do next? Do we know? No, I was about to. I, my brain answered my own question or my mouth's question before I even got to the end of it. So it doesn't it doesn't merit. Uh, it doesn't merit disclosing to you the inanity of that thought that popped into my head. Um, hmm. So we go blue, light green. Blue, light green, purple, four. Blue, light green, purple, four. Maybe maybe we try it the other way then. Maybe there's a reason that doesn't work. So then we go into four. Then we're going to force... What are we going to force then? So if we go, if we went there, for example, have we have we caused any problem for ourselves with that? We know this is orange. I'm not sure what we're going to do with this end then, but I think it's still got options. I mean, it could go that way, it could go that way. Maybe maybe it can't go that way because it might have, might be light green if it goes that way. Um, but that's it's okay. So it's not clear to me. I don't think which way that goes. That's infuriating. Right, so I've got to think again. Let's try. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's try and think about something else. Um, I know this goes into dark green, which in turn goes into red. I know. What else do we know? Red, 
dark green, orange four. Pink or purple, light green, blue. As it, can I do better now thinking about, ah, that square can't be a one or a seven, can it? Because if that, well, no, that's wrong. I'm think, uh, the problem is, I think in my brain, I'm thinking that sevens have the same problem as ones, and they don't. It's ones that can't be next to each other in this puzzle. So it's certainly true to say that isn't a one. If that's a one, neither of these can be a one in column two, and that breaks the world. Um, so that can't be a one. But why couldn't one of these be a one, for example? If one of these is a one, it's going to move on to a two six in one of these. And that's probably fine, isn't it? Okay, can we... Oh dear, I'm stuck here. I am stuck. I'm not wholly surprised. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how difficult this puzzle is, but Marty, I think, said it had only had a handful of solves, so it presumably has proposed some people some trouble. Maybe I meant to think about this, but how can you think about this? I mean, I mean, this could be an end. This could be an end. Anything could be an end here. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't feel like where we're meant to focus, I have to say. Um Right, so what is it that I'm meant to appreciate here? could be that this one goes into dark green, goes into red. Blue in this column? It depends. You see, if blue is one, then blue would have to be in one of those two squares. But if blue is seven, then red is one, and red would have to be in one of these two squares. I know one of these is a four. I know... Ah, uh, maybe I can do... Can I do something with this one, then? This one has to go into a four. Oh, where did... Oh, that's interesting. Hang on. Oh, this is very simple. Where does where does orange get a four from? It can't get any fours here. Because there's already fours that have been hypothecated to other thermos. So that's got to get a four from here. Okay, well that's something. And now that has to get a a purple. Oh, that's odd. Okay. Uh Right, this has to get a purple 3-5 now, ne next, because because look at the way this sequence is going. This 4 is going to be flanked by two 3-5s, obviously. It's got one 3-5 here, so it needs the other colour of 3-5. But it can't be that one, because that would create a weird thermo that would go 1, 2, 3, 4. A 3, f <laughs> it would go, well, it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, basically, and that's... That's nonsense. That's not continuing in one direction. So it definitely doesn't. That is not. That is not a Harry Styles thermometer that we could build if we if we went that way. So we've got to we've got to pen this off. So this one now. Well, this is the one I think is going to go down there, but it definitely doesn't turn right. And the purple that attaches to this. Can we say anything about that? I mean, it's obviously not here, is it? It's not in this square because that would put two purples in the row. And if that's purple, if that's purple, let's just think about that for a minute. If that's purple, then where does purple go? It goes to light green after that. So that would be light green. That doesn't feel right. That does not feel right. Um, hmm. 
because what I'm thinking there is if it goes here with a purple 3-5, this is a light green 2-6, and then I've got to put a 1-7 after this, which is a blue 1-7, but it can't be here or here because that would extend the thermo by two cells. So I don't think this goes downwards to there. Let me just d double check my logic there. If that's, if that's purple, that is definitely light green. And then there is nowhere for a blue. That's right, isn't it? So, so well, the, pro <laughs> the problem with this is that this four, even though I've, I've, I've ruled it out from going in three cardinal directions, it can't go west, it can't go east, and it can't go south. It could still go north, it could still go northeast, and it could go it could go southeast pro uh, no yeah, it could go southeast, I think, and it might be able to go southwest southwest with a uh, oh no, it can't go southwest because this square can't be three or five, so I, Oh, it won't let me do that. I, I was trying to put an X at this junction here, and it won't let me. So, but there are still that one, that one, and that one. So one of those is a purple three five attaching to this. That's that's not very helpful, is it? That's that's not the most brilliant deduction in Christendom, if we're honest. Um, okay. Well, so let's think again. What are we going to have to do to unstick ourselves from this, this conundrum that we found ourselves in? We know this is going to join green, which in turn is going to join red, but not that red. This, I don't know whether it's an ending or not. This joins to purple three, five. which could well be that. Um, and yeah, so this one here can't go there because that can't be purple three, five because it sees purple three, five. This one here can't go down here because that sees purple three five so it does definitely only has sort of a, a binary choice it either goes to row five column three whoopsie 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 it either goes to row five column three or it goes to row seven column two oh no. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it, I think. Right. So if this dips down now and goes there, isn't it a reasonable question now to ask where this gets? This one needs light green 2-6. And the point is it can't get it now because to get it, well, let's let's go through the reasons it can't get it. Um, so if this drops down to get light green two six from this square, row five, column three, it can't go here because that would put two light green two sixes in the row. So it can't go anywhere south and it can't go there because this doesn't have a diamond. That's amazing. That is amazing. So in fact, this doesn't go downwards. So it must go upwards. And now this, I've got to be really careful now. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean for the world? Well, I mean, this has to get in and out. So it must do that. I mean, that is now forced, which means one of these is a four. And the other one is the digit that attaches is, is light green. Oh, and you can see that's not light green. So oh, this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So that's four. That is the two or the six that we were looking for. 
So there's, a, and we know there's a two six up here because that that's that that is the green colour this is joining to. So if we look at this column now, there's a floating two six pair between these three cells. The, the two and the six in the column in column three must be in those three cells, and that means that top digit sees two six pair, three five pair, and four. So it is a one or a seven, but it's not blue. So that is one seven red. And now. Oh, I see one of these is blue now. So this is a blue green pair. So if, if blue was one, we would know that couldn't be the one because those ones would touch. But if blue's seven, then we don't know anything. Ah, but we know what that digit is because that digit connects to, is, is on, the, on the other side of three, five, two, six, three, five, two, six. So that is blue. That is a blue digit. This, therefore, is the 35 orange. This is the blue 17. Um, right, so that 35 has to go to green 26. Oh, we don't know. It's in one of those two. <laughs> green 26 in one of those two. Um, this 4 has to go to. Uh, purple three five. Oh, this is the one we don't know about. We've thought about this already. Bobbins. Um, okay, so this goes to green. Ah, ah, here is a very a very, I was going to say, interesting thought, and then I knew I'd get ridiculed. So no, I'm going to say, here is a thought, and explain what my thought is. I don't think that it can go there. Because if this is the green 2-6, then we have the question, where is the red 1-7 going that must join this? And this is gorgeous again, because this can't be red 1-7 by Sudoku. So the only other thing, and this can't be either, the only other way of getting to a red 1-7 would be to go to this square, and if that square is a red 1-7, then that is a 0 or a 8, because the thermo isn't 7 long then, it's 8 long, at least, because these two are inextricably linked. So that means this is not green 2-6, this is green 2-6, and that means, well, that oh, right, these two now, a three five pair because look I've not put three and five in this row so these are the two colors this this is an orange purple pair which means well I think that probably means one of these is a four doesn't it um I suppose maybe they could no they can't both be two six so I think one of these is a four where does this get its red from could be there, couldn't it? Pro 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 in fact, it is there. It just must. Well, oh, that's rotten. Well, here's an it. Right, the point is, I haven't put red 1 7 into this row. And because these are threes and fives, I can't put red 1 7 into these because they would. I mean, imagine that's a one. What digit is this meant to be? It's meant to be two or six, and it can't be. So this has to be red 1, 7, but the thought I've had there is what's, why is it necessary that this joins to this? I think it does, but is it necessary that it does? I'm not sure it is, because if what if that was green 2, 6? If it goes red, green 2, 6, then orange it would be. That would be okay, wouldn't it? So one of these is 4, definitely. And one of them is green. Yeah, one of them is green two six as well. So this is green and four. I don't really know. I don't really know how to pencil like that. I'll do it like that. But okay. Well, the corner therefore is not the end of a thermo because it sees both ends of the thermo. So the corner is a continuation. It, it needs an in and an out. And that's beautiful. This is, again, it's a sick point. This is sensational setting, Michael. Right, the point now is you can't do that. 
Because if you do that, these threes and fives are too far away on the line. There are two digits between them. There's a four and there's a two six. So imagine, imagine you go from here, you say this is three, then you go four. Well, now we should be seeing five and we're not, we're seeing a two or a six. So we're seeing three, four, six, for example, and then we're going back down to five again. The thermometer is not continuous. So you've got to go like that. And now this can work because these are one, the three and fives are one apart on this thermo now, if that is a four. So four goes in the corner, uh, which is not green, which means this is green. Uh, this is the quandary I was worried about because now this can go either way. Uh, no, no, it can't actually. It can't go either way because that, that needs to see a red one seven. And if there's only red one, red one seven, that's with any, within any distance of it. So that is, uh, look now, look now. This needs red one seven as well, and it can't get it in the column. So it's got to get it there. That is red one seven. Oh, this is wonderful, isn't it? It's absolutely wonderful. Now, what does this need? Well, we know it needs light green, and it can't get it here, because that would cause another crossing of thermos, which is illegal. Uh, there's no diamond there, so it goes there. And now we know it goes into blue, which is therefore in one of these squares. So one of those is blue, but we don't know. I don't think we know which one. This square is now blue, and that's done it. Look at this row. It needed, it, this digit is by Sudoku, a blue. And now, by Sudoku, we have proved that two blues touch one another. And if blues touch one another, what can they not be? They can't be ones. So blue, wherever it occurs, yeah, oh, this, no. Well, that's great. It's great, but it's not going to do the disambiguation up there, I don't think. Um, so red is one. Oh, let's see if we can make it do this. So red is one, I think. Oh, still didn't make it do it. Red, no. No, hang on. If red is one, that's going to do... That's going to do me the pro give me the problem. I need no. I need blue to be seven. Sorry, I can't remember if I said that before. No, well that that that, that does make red one. What's going on with my brain? It's gone backwards. Um, green. Uh, green is two. So orange is three. Oh, we don't know over there. Do we? Oh, we might be able to because we should be able to work out what. Um, what light green is light green is six so purple is five and that must be next to a purple so this is purple uh, which is that one so this is now orange we've got to make sure that the ones are kept apart whenever we can how many ones have we got in the grid we've got five Right, I see. Where is one in column four? Remember, it cannot be anywhere near this. So it can't be in that domino. It can't be there by Sudoku. So it's exactly equal to there. So that's now six ones. So we must be able to get the seventh one. We've not put a one in this row. So it goes there by Sudoku. Um, now... <laughs> What does that mean? Well, I think we must know. No, we don't, do we? Oh, what about that one then? So that needs to see a light green six, which must be in one of those squares. I don't know whether to go to sort of corner pencil marking now. We might be better off doing that. What are those two digits then? They are two and seven. That is a two seven pair. And the seven is going to need a light green six in one of these. I mean, we could go full, we could go full pencil mark here. What's the other digit needed here? Five, so five. Okay, so let's actually pencil mark this up. That's five or six. That's six or seven. That's five or seven. So this needs a six which could be in either position if if 
if that's that's five that's seven that's probably the six although that one needs a six that's five. Oh, five is purple isn't it sorry yeah five the five is purple maybe we do that then <laughs> i don't know if that's a good idea or not um what about have we filled in have we got all the thermos we're meant to get that look that four looks stranded one two three four that needs a five. Where's that getting a five from? That's a reasonable question. Doesn't seem to be able to get that one. So that's five. That's seven. That's six by Sudoku. This six needs a seven. And I can only get it from there. So that's seven which is blue. Therefore that's not blue. That's definitely the six. That's definitely the purple. So this, this thermo here goes there. And then it needs... It needs a six. It's again, it's it's not totally obvious it's that one. I mean, that one takes that one for sure. Oh, this seven needs a six. So that goes there. So that's probably going to just dip in here and finish. But I'm not sure we know that for sure. Let's fill in column seven. This has got to be a two five pair. <laughs> Sudoku doesn't help me. Uh, these squares are three, four and seven. That's not seven, that's not three, that's not four. These squares are three, four, and six. Mark would be proud of this level of absurd pencil marking. Oh, oh no. I was wondering whether we were going to get digits along this crossing, which weren't consecutive, but actually everything is consecutive, so that's working fine. Uh, and these squares are two, five, and six. And that's not six, and that's not five. And that could be anything, right. So this, oh, oh, no, I was going to say that this is a corner. It, it, well, what I meant by that was it was continuous. So something needs to come out of here and into something else, in but in two directions. Well, okay, how, how do you make... No, you can't. Ah, bother. I thought for a moment there was a problem making this a five. Because if it's a five, it needs six and four around it. But it could could go four, five, six, seven. And that would probably have to be three, two, one. Three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> it's going to be something to do with don't allow things to cross uh, if they're not meant to. Okay. Where does this 7, 6 get a 5 from now? Those don't seem to be able to be 5. So that, I think, is the 5 that we must... This is the droid we're looking for. That's a 5. So that's a 2 in the corner. That 2 needs to connect to a 3. Where's it getting it from? It must be there. So that's 3. Then by Sudoku, that's 4. So that's 6. That's 3. That's 7. That's 4. Is that right? That is right, I think. This is now two. That's two. That's seven. That's five. And that's six. And that is the puzzle. That's the puzzle. But we have not finished. Oh, no, we haven't. We have got to figure out. Right. Well, this five needs a four. So it goes there. This three needs a two. It goes there. That two needs a one. It goes there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the wrong number of crossings here, aren't I? I don't know what I've done wrong there. But I can't. Oh, maybe it does work. Maybe it does work. I'm not sure. Uh, it, maybe it does work. This is bizarre. So this one needs a two. So it goes round the top hat there. And that connects. Now if we look at this one. This one needs a two. So it's got to go there. Now two we know is a green digit. So that's definitely and that two needs a three, and it could get it there only, so that's a region. The seven needs to join to a six, which is there. Now it needs to go five, four, three, two, one, and it can do it by going there. And if that's right, we have joined up all the thermos. So the only way to check is going to be 
to go. Let's go and mark some things off. So let's check. We've got. Let's do this bowl first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll we'll tick it off like that. We'll put we'll, and then we'll change colour. Okay. So this one. Oh, that's terrible. I can't see it. <laughs> this one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's use red. That one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's fine. This one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there was a crossing there, but it was in a legitimate place. So this one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a crossing, but that's legitimate. So this one here hasn't got any anything wrong with it. And as, have all the ones now got a... Yeah, that's right. That's amazing. What an amazing puzzle. Absolutely. Oh, let's click tick. Is it going to know? Yes. Ten people have solved it. Like the puzzle? Yes, I do. That's, that's amazing. Absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you very much, Marty, for such a fulsome recommendation of that. That was... It was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And... And incredible that you could specify a unique grid that was solvable indeed as a human being I will uh, I think probably people will will accept I do qualify as a human being although Mark un rather unkind was it Mark rather unkindly referred to me as being hatched once <laughs> um, um, anyway I I do think that, I mean it was very solvable it was quite tricky round here to work out how to how that cell had to get out but it was absolutely beautiful there was, i can't remember where the right moment was but there was a point i think where these two connected and this couldn't cross because there was no diamond and that forced this one to get the right color down here it's just absolutely beautiful really is it's a it's an amazing puzzle absolutely amazing puzzle um michael take a bow let me know in the comments whether you had a go. Let me know if you managed to finish this miraculous thing off. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.